Metal Complex here, and today we're going to be looking at a ton of new arrivals and some drops and things that are coming soon to DLT trading. It's actually been three weeks since I've done this. I just checked. I can't believe it's been that long since I've looked at DLT, but it has been. And as per usual, they have restocked with some awesome stuff. If you've never checked out DLT, you should definitely check out DLT. They have, it's probably, I mean, I have a lot of retailers that I enjoy, but if I'm being honest, DLT trading is probably my favorite place to go for new stuff that I'm personally interested in. Um, so I'll link all this stuff down in the description. I highly recommend that you at least browse it uh, for yourself. But if you want to stick around and hear my opinions and <laughs> everything that I think, I guess, on everything I'm looking at here, then uh, please do because it's usually a good time. Um, I uh, Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that the intro is good the way that that, that is. Anyways. Ballast songs. You guys ask me all the time. A day will come when I will look at a ballast song. But I think probably, probably if I dig into my reasoning behind not wanting to look at them, I know that I will look like an idiot handling a, um, a ballast song. Because I, I, I just don't know. I mean, I understand fundamentally like how they operate. But I'm not like... An, a ballast song aficionado and there's like an enormous history and there are like specific models like they have their own like the 940 of ballast songs right or the spider co pm2 of ballast songs. like they have their own it's like their own thing right ballast song guys can tell you you know i don't know that stuff so i guess i'm kind of intimidated i also can't do any of the cool tricks so it would just be um boring for regular knife people who are like me and aren't into ballast songs and it would be like Peak cringe for people who do know about battle songs. A bunch of new bug outs. Admittedly, there was one in here that I didn't think was, well, it's still. So the mini narrows, this is a new thing. And you guys will hear more from me on that in the future, uh, in the near future. They also have an aluminum and M390 bug out, which as far as bench made pricing goes, it's not nearly as offensive as the Narrows. It is still, like, rest assured, though, I, I still would consider this an incredibly high-priced item, even though it is made in the USA, right? We cannot compare this directly to Chinese aluminum or Chinese titanium and M390 knives, right? I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm saying the exact same thing made in China is obviously going to be substantially less because the labor costs are lower. That being said, even as far as, like, comparing to other USA-made knives, 288 is really high. Um, now, on the flip side of that, your Vanax Kunwu Padres in diamond textured titanium with Timascus pivot collars, and in this case, DLC, I don't think 299 is bad. I have this knife here, and it is wonderful. Now, they do also, of course, still have the full-size ones, but this guy, right around the size of the pair of three, if you want something that is a uh, substantial like well not substantial that's that's really really great as far as a compact edc but you want all that flashy stuff you want that embellishment and you know elements that actually attribute or contribute to uh meaningful uh utility the the that's the oh that's the padre i'm sorry i thought it was the compadre these are padres these are the full-size ones yeah well there you go the compadre is the smaller one these are the full-size ones i got them back in stock i guess all right. Well, there you go. I'll probably make a post about this. You guys are seeing this probably Saturday morning. I'm recording it on a Friday afternoon. So there you go. The Padre, that, Those are easily worth. That's, a, that's an example of a Chinese uh, premium knife that I think is actually spot on. Vanax is a ridiculously expensive steel. You also essentially do not have to worry about corrosion. With that is, It's so stainless, you basically can just forget about worrying that it's going to discolor. I have this coming. That is, uh, I don't know what to think about this yet. What is this? It's just a, it's a, it's a liner lock, right? Yeah. Magna cut. So tactile does a great job heat treating their magna cut. This looks like a Terzwola. Really getting Terzwola vibes from this. What's on the pocket clip? Quite a bit. Originally designed the ages. Oh, well it is. It's a Terzwola. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, this is a, there's, there's ripping off Bob here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have just read. Uh, yeah, it's, it's clearly a Terzwola. Okay. So 6364. Actually, this is kind of cool. 
yeah, th it's expensive. Um, these are small batch in-house production knives. So uh, we are not looking at the same, like, yes, it's expensive, but we're not looking at the same rules as like, or the same costs as like what goes into a Benchmade, right? So, so a lot of people are going to have a problem with this. What's the size? God, I really like, what is the deal with making, I, like I have an Eagle Rock from CKF and it's massive. That's a Terzawola design. Huge. So many Terzawola production collabs are coming out small. I wish this that this was bigger. It's cool. Um, personally, I, uh, I, I, I think that the, the price is a lot more justifiable than, say, the Narrows from Benchmade. Uh, but I still, I don't know that I personally would want to spend that much on it. It's on the way to me. I'll, t I'll let you guys know what I think when it gets here. Both Praetorian ties are gone. No surprise there. Uh, the terrain 365 Invictus. I pointed this out in my community tab. If you guys want to know, I, I try to update people on interesting drops in my community tab. So check there. Uh, I knew that those would both go. Those are Terravantium or Dendritic Cobalt. So they also cannot, that's not even steel. It can't corrode. Um, it's just funny. Like I, I am as baffled as you guys that the Praetorian ties still at $1,900 sell as fast as they do, but they do. They gone. Mm, they don't drop very often. I'll admit though. Um, they, they're still cool. I don't, I've, I haven't been impressed with Medford knives for a long time, but I got a weird fascination with the Praetorian tie. That's, it's just cool, man. It looks like something that was dug out of the earth. Anyways, switch pen. I also have a switch pen coming. What is this? Tactile pens are awesome. I have three tactile pens that I use all the time. They're expensive. It's just a pen, right? If you're questioning that, Reality check. You're watching knife content. I mean, like, if this, the, look, look at this, right? If you're going to ignore this and question why a pen is 150 bucks, <laughs> you're watching the wrong channel. But yeah, they are really nice pens for sure. A whole bunch of um, dreadnoughts. Uh, these are also like your small batch in-house knives. Again, you cannot compare to Spyderco. ZT, Kai USA, Benchmade, not the same rule. The costs for this stuff are substantially higher. Not to say that this is 100% justified to every person on the planet, but if you understand the costs that go into something like this, right, um, then that, that price tag is going to make a lot more sense to you. Still, though, as I've mentioned in the past, there are better in-house, you know, USA um, mid-tech category knives that you can get for that price tag. Um, a lot of the non-flipper Bowies. I feel like a lot of people, like, no surprise that they're, oh, there's one left. So, uh, the, no surprise that these are almost completely gone, but the people who skipped out on these, the non-flipper XMs are, in my opinion, always the best. <clears throat> Those are the ones you want to go for. So, if you're still on the fence, there's one right there. It'll probably be gone by tomorrow. But if it's still there and you really want a non-flipper, you know, the XM18 non-flippers are the best. Three-inch uh, XMs, I haven't done these in a while. These are Harpoon Tantos. Fine. Uh, also, I think um, that Hinderer's S45VN is, um, if you're going to choose, like, uh, they have the same industry standard, you know, heat treat. It seems like the 5961, which, whether or not that's appropriate, you know, it, it comes down to opinion. Um, but the community, generally, including myself, would prefer to see uh, a steel like 20 severe m390 number one probably at a thinner geometry to optimize cutting and number two at a higher hardness range 60 to 62 again just opinion i think their s45 vn which i believe is heat treated heat treated in the same range makes way more sense um number one it's more optimized for the composition and number two it's probably better suited for this geometry and when people use them it's, it's probably a better steel for the xm in general so there you go no surprise, those are out of stock. These are awesome. I almost linked these, but I knew people would be fifty dollars for a little keychain. These, these, uh, um. Oh wait, that's not the Rhino ones. Where's the Rhino ones? Yeah, they, here they are. These are the. I have this attached to my keys, and it is still glow. Like this is tritium. It's a huge piece of tritium 
The number of times I have lost my keys in the dark and found it, be found them because of this thing, I thought, like, in the rarest of circumstances, would I ever, would that ever, like, pan out to be a good purchase? But many times, many times I have dropped my keys or left them somewhere where I just can't quite see and uh, have uh, have been able to find them. Um, so, yeah, is it expensive for a keychain? Yeah. Does it, does it work? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Yes. I also have this coming in. So we'll talk about that when it arrives. It's a lot of money. The readout, uh, the mini Claymore. I don't like the injection mold plastic, right? Heretic Medusa, it's kind of a cool knife. Uh, oh, I got Flytanium. I have these exact scales for my PM2. You guys see it every day on reviews. These are awesome scales. They work really, really well. And they've been on this PM2 for at least a couple years. Really nice. Really nice scales. Great fit. Great finish. Highly recommendable. Swiss Army, if you have your, if you're an NHL fan, I guess these are NHL themed um, Swiss Army classics. Oh, no surprise. Those, those $1,500 3V Gladius huge knives by RMJ Tech. You know, no, no surprise that those are gone. I was tempted, I'll be honest with you. No, 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 nothing interesting as for me here. Olight Metal. Hmm. It's not a bad looking knife. 154CM in Micarta. Oh, it's a little tiny thing. If it were a little bigger. If it were a little bigger, it'd be interesting. Praetorian T. Hmm. Just not, I've never reviewed the infraction. I'll tell you why. I probably should review it. I just, it's so ugly. I don't like it. Don't like how it looks. Also, is Medford, has Medford bumped their heat treat for Magna Cut? Because in the early days, they were hitting it really low. Really low. Uh, more XM18 three inches. Those are never going to be as popular unless they're that. I'll tell you the ones that'll go really quick. No surprise. The three inch non flipper slicers. Those will go immediately, but it's been a long time since we've seen those. Bunch of Protex, mini XOs in 3V, mini XO gravity. Uh, is, is the mini XO, right? 3V. I don't know. It's, it's, 3v is such a weird choice for a little tiny gravity knife i think something something else would have been a better choice that cipher with the uh with the dagger grind is is actually pretty cool that has the titanium pocket clip on it as well i am waiting for their um desperately waiting for their zero blade play otf i cannot wait to try that Ooh. That's an even better. That's probably the best cipher I've seen. What's the size of this one? Eight and a half inches. That's really cool. It doesn't look like an eight and a half inch OTF, but it, that's a, that's a super cool um, OTF. I like that. I like that a lot. I have not handled that yet, but I imagine it's just as good as the other one. The uh, I can't believe this is still here. The full titanium auto titanium auto eclipse. It's very rare to see a titanium side opening automatic knife. Very rare. Um, so full tie, small batch, in-house, hinderer, all of that. What's the blade steel? S45VN. Don't sleep on that one. I didn't realize that was still there. That's a good one. More tons of those. Those are going to be sitting there for a bit. Those excellent, those, those three inches. <clears throat> Lots of Medfords. There's always tons of Medfords left over. This one, does it does not surprise me at all that it, these are still here. Why is this so... Like, it would have made sense to me if this thing was like 400 bucks. Why is this 600 What is happening? Is it an integral? What am I missing here? There's a lot of, like, complex machining. It's a cool knife. Mill, I mean, it's, it's USA. Again, small batch in-house. Magna Cut, all of that machined and assembled yeah they they're doing all all of that stuff fully machined and assembled lock insert is 14 t28n okay interesting 
Why? I guess it's the same price. Okay, to be fair, it's the same price as a full tie XM18. It's probably made the same way. So maybe I'm just maybe I'm being biased, you know, there with the like versus the XMs. If you're gonna buy a Shiro, I always make you know I always uh, make this. Uh, I think all that's left is the of the ones that I would buy. Yeah, the Quantum versus I don't like the G10 front scale ones. You know, I guess for that money, but. Your Quantum Ursus in titanium at 625. Those are good knives. Uh, and then, you know, for people questioning, like, why is that one okay at 600 but not the tactile? There's a noticeable step up in quality if you've handled Shirogroff knives. Uh, I own, oops, no, I don't own this. I own this except for the fact that this is a custom. But I do own the new Combat Troodon, and it is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, McNeese PM Mach 2 three and a half Gen 2 autos in titanium. Another titanium auto, um, made in the USA, a little bit less than the hinderer. What else we got here? I feel like I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. I feel like this Star Wars themed stuff, like this was like a big fad for a while, and these would go like really quick and they'd always get bought up super fast. And now people are over it. And now we're seeing tons of this stuff just like sitting around. At least that's what I see. Um, so I feel like that's probably run its course. Um, the Vanguard Atomic is actually really cool. I feel like people are kind of confused and not sure exactly what it is. I have it here. If you guys want to wait for my review, that's fine. Um, but uh, it's pretty good. And then we're back to the Olamics, which I feel like these in particular are incredibly underrated. I touched on these last time. These are so underrated. These are like, these feel like customs. They're absolutely beautiful. Let's look at, actually, um, let's go back and let's look at restocks real quick. Still, these, I feel like these are some of the same restocks that we looked at last. I want to see if there's anything else that's worth pointing out. Not really. Manix too lightweight. Is that like in uh, S110? Yeah, S110. Um, did the Rex 121 Spider Coast drop? Out of stock. Notify when available. I'm not sure if, so sometimes, yeah, see it says coming soon. So these have not dropped at DLT yet. I heard that somewhere else they dropped, so I would be paying attention to this. I have no idea. I don't have any inside information on when those are dropping. Let's look at their drops page real quick. In stock, in stock, these are three. That's kind of neat. What is this? Ooh. Real nice little finch there. Real nice little finch. I like finch. Finch knives are cool. Uh, let's go back. Is that it for the drops page? Okay. So then let's go back and do um, restocks, new arrivals. I think, um, oh, there it was. I'm sorry. It was right there. See what's coming to DLT. Ballast songs, those are the ones listed. Coming soon, coming soon. I think these all popped up on that page initially. The Lion Steel Twain actually does look pretty nice, but I have a feeling it's small. I'd like to see. Yeah, seven and a quarter. <clears throat> not saying that's not worth it. And number one, I have no idea how they're heat treating their Magna Cut, but for the same reason you guys are skeptical, I am too. Italy. Nothing against the country. It's just Lion Steel and Italy and Magna Cut are usually not, you know, I don't have a lot of confidence in the hardness there. That's a good looking knife good looking fixed blade that I have no use for. Hogue Sick, uh, Spartan Harzy in Magna Cut. I think Spartan Harzy does a really good job with um, Magna Cut. I also really like their fixed blades. God, that's a good looking fixed blade. Look at that. Gorgeous. I bet that's so comfy. So comfy. I wouldn't expect a fixed blade in Magna Cut to have nearly as high of hardness, right? I don't think you'd want a fixed blade, a Magna Cut fixed blade at 64. 
you'd probably want that 61, 62. Oh, Umnumzans are coming. So, understand, if you want an Umnumzan, like this is like the quintessential, is this the, this is the glass bead, bla God, I bet that's gorgeous. Uh, Magna Cut, glass bead blast Umnumzan. If you want this, you will have to be, right? Why don't they just make more? They do. They do make more. They're constantly making them. There are so many authorized retailers that have probably contracts, you know, have, have had orders for Umnumzans for close to, if not over a year. And so Chris Reeve Knives is fulfilling them constantly. But it's not like, you know, even if they ordered, like, I'm not sure, they probably have a limit to how many they can order because Chris Reeve Knives operating at maximum capacity and, you know, for people saying, why don't they invest to increase capacity? They have been. That's all they've done is grow and increase it. But the demand has continued. Essentially, it's simple. The demand has always been higher than their ability to create them, right? So screaming into your keyboard with your fingers, why don't they just make more? I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be nice here. The nicest that I'm willing to be is that that's just stupid. It's, that's not, it, it, that's not going, it's not like they're like, oh my gosh, that's it. Guys, while we've been sitting here twiddling our thumbs, we could have just been making more. Everybody wants these. Everybody wants them. Not just you, everybody, right? I mean, not everybody, but everybody who wants one, wants one. And there's a lot of people, right? I'm, I'm saying this sounds like I'm irritated because I see comments like that all the time. Why don't they just make more? It's in their best interest to make more because they make more money. Well, it's probably a, more of a conspiracy with artificial scarcity. Of, well, now it's not that complicated. Um, I man, I'm gonna get it for this. I'm gonna get it for this in the comments, <laughs> and then the same coming soon. Anyways, to sort of to cap that off, the demand is higher than the than, than they're able to create them. That's that's the simplicity of it. So for the time being, until they become substantially less popular, uh, or are able to catch up right? It, they're just going to be hard to get. Uh, and then the same spider codes that have been coming soon for a long time. No idea when those are going to drop. Spider code, spider code, spider code. What's that? Oh, the black bodacious. Wow. Who cares? But the Rex, uh, ooh, <laughs> military two and carbon fiber. I bet that's, uh, that laminate stuff though. Eh. Um, maybe that's a, that's an American spider code though. So maybe that's just the peel ply texturing. I don't know. Does it say? Yeah, it says handle material G10. So that's G10 under a small piece of carbon fiber. Don't love that. Just do carbon fiber. Do carbon fiber or G10. Anyways, lots of stuff. All of these pages will be linked in the description. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed going on this little journey with me. Don't get butt hurt about the Unums on stuff. You know, sometimes, you know, it's just, just the way the facts are delivered on this channel with a little bit of salt and a little bit of sarcasm. Hope you enjoyed. Check the links out in the description. Check out DLT. It's worth it. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.